AI, right? It's here. How do we deal with it? The Biden administration launching an artificial intelligence security center. It will oversee development and integration of AI into U.S. defense systems. As part of the National Security Agency, the new center will also defend against cyber threats led by China and Russia. The president is expected to issue an executive order on AI as soon as this week, and the White House has already released a blueprint called the AI Bill of Rights. It is a set of five broad principles to help guide the development and use of AI, but it is not enforceable by law. Here to talk more about the AI Bill of Rights, or safe and effective systems is part of it, algorithm discrimination protections and data privacy are others, is Greg Lawson, CEO of the cybersecurity firm Conceal. Uh, thanks for being with us this morning. Some of the other um, Bill of Rights points, you should be able to opt out and you should know that an automated system is being used to understand how and why it contributes and could impact you. Is this a good idea to have this and how difficult will it be to mitigate some of the threats? Great to be with you, Marnie, and thank you. I think the AI Bill of Rights is, is a good idea. There's so much power and potential with AI, so many positive use cases, but there are opportunities where it can be abused. And, you know, we'll talk about a couple of these points. One, the algorithmic discrimination. So, you know, AI is based on language learning models, and there's going to be inherent biases because it's pulling all that data from the internet, historical data as well. And those, those pieces of information, they're, there's definitely bias in, in integrated with those. So if an algorithm is used and, and doesn't have some sort of um, filtering that's going on to be able to prevent against discriminating against a certain group or uh, a certain ideolo ideological group, then you could have potentials for abuse there. And I think that's one, one area where this is, a, this is very, very positive. From a consumer standpoint, how do we know if AI is being used, right? I mean, we're quick to click, um, and it can be difficult to see um, when we might be being tricked. Right. Well, that's exactly why the human alternatives piece is in there, right? So there should be something just like, for example, when you're um, browsing a website, you accept cookies, right? You have to opt in to being tracked on that. The same thing, if your personal data is being used in an AI algorithm, you should be able to know that. Uh, especially maybe in a hiring process. And that way, this Bill of Rights allows, I think, folks to be able to retain some agency as to whether they want their information to go through those, those, um, those AI uh, processes. So I think this is a really uh, great move here. It has some very smart people. Maria Zuber is a esteemed professor of physics that's co-chairing uh, the commission as well. Uh, I think this is a great move to, for people to really understand the risks that are involved and to be able to make sure we're harnessing the powers of AI for, for good and to, and to help folks out. And as I mentioned, Greg, it's not enforceable by law, but there might there be other consequences when it's used inappropriately? I think this is the area where it's going to get a little bit tricky. Obviously, whenever you have government kind of getting uh, involved with technology and innovation, there's going to be a natural conflict. I think when it comes to consumer rights, we have we have data protection rights for many different areas of our life. I, I think as this evolves, there there is going to probably have to be some legislation that that, that comes into play, especially when it comes to things like just think about getting a loan, uh, getting a mortgage, getting a opening bank accounts. You want to make sure that those things, those 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 rights aren't violated, and that data is being used appropriately. Um, so I, I imagine there will be some legislation down the road. From a security threat standpoint, what is the biggest risk mm -hmm. in your mind with AI? I think as, as a CEO of a cybersecurity company, we face this every day. Threat actors are using AI to make it very hard to defend against certain vectors. We've seen attacks on MGM and Caesars the last couple of weeks. Johnson Controls had a cyber attack as well. So we're seeing more and more sophisticated cyber attacks, that usually involving social engineering being put into AI engines. And it's very hard for even sophisticated security uh, organizations to stop. But on the flip side of that, we're, we're able to use it uh, to be able to, to detect these threats as well. So I would say the ability of a cyber threat actor to like take down enterprises, that's, that's the, the biggest immediate threat that I see. Uh, but we have to be able to harness that, stay ahead of it. That's why these commissions are good. The investment is really, really positive because it allows not just industry, but allows government to work together and to, uh, to stop the the, the most visible and the, and the most nefarious uh, cyber threats generated by AI. And thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.